Do you have an old, ugly, dated piece of furniture? Don't get rid of it because today I'm sharing how to turn that old piece into something modern and beautiful. I'm Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and welcome or welcome back to my furniture painting channel. Today I'm transforming an 80s nightstand set into something I believe you're not even going to recognize. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. So I found these nightstands or this nightstand set selling at my local restore for $20 a piece. When I brought them home, I gave them a really good once over and they were in really good condition, uh, except cosmetically, they really could use some help. Uh, they were a bit scratched up and the dated trim on the two front door panels just had to go. So I started by removing the $20 price tags with my heat gun. And if you ever have any problems getting rid of anything sticky, uh, like a price tag or stickers or anything on your furniture, heat gun makes it so much easier. If you don't have a heat gun, a blow dryer or hair dryer works just as well. After giving them a wipe down, I went ahead and I removed the old hardware off the two front door panels. I always keep all my old, old hardware. I have a huge stash at this point but you know what you never know when it comes in handy and even if I was to use a little gilding wax on these old hardware pieces they really come to life for another piece in the future so I could tell the trim was held in place by trim nails so I went ahead and grabbed my painter's tool along with a furniture mallet and I started uh I, I put the painter's tool in behind the trim and I started hitting it to try and loosen it up. As you can see, it didn't really work out that great. Then I went in with my screwdriver and started trying to loosen it up that way. But I found out that, I don't know, this kind of does more damage than it does good. So I went ahead and I got my pry bar, which I'm not sure why I did not do in the first place. I went and picked up my pry bar and started prying them loose with the proper tool. And when using the pry bar, I also like to put a shim of wood underneath it so it does not damage the door frame in and around the area that I'm trying to get off. Because I've done that, I don't know how many times in the past and it just causes me excess work. With the shim in behind the tool, you use it as leverage as well. You can put a lot more pressure. And as you can see, with the shim in behind the pry bar and me actually hitting it with the furniture mallet, and then I can use the leverage to pry the trim off. And it just works so much easier. Uh, this set I got is an anvil pry bar set. It comes in a set of three and they're really inexpensive. You can buy one for anywhere between, I don't know, six and ten dollars. And I can't tell you how many times I've used these for my furniture makeovers. Once I had all the trim off, it was time to remove any of the trim nails that were sticking out of the back end. So I just took a pair of pliers and removed all the trim nails. And here's what they looked like without that old dated trim. Now it was time to turn them over and remove the bottom. I thought I could just remove the bottom by hitting, hitting them off with my furniture mallet, uh, but good they didn't come off because it just shows how well built these were. Uh, so then I took my pry bar thinking I could remove them this way and that didn't work either. I had to remove all the screws first. I'm not sure what I was thinking. <laughs> so I removed all the screws uh, from the bottom base. Then I started hitting it with the furniture mallet again, thinking that the bottom would come off, but nope it needed to be cut off. Uh, this sucker was really on there good. So I brought out my oscillating tool uh, with a wood blade affixed to it. And this worked perfectly. Uh, what I like to do when I'm cutting through a base is just kind of score it first and then let the tool do the work. I don't apply too much pressure. I just let the blade do its thing. And I go back and forth 
And this, for this makeover, it was really great because I had the ledge for the blade to sit on. If you do not have a ledge when you're using these oscillating blades, it's good to put your hand on something level so you keep that blade um, perpendicular to to the project that you're working on because if you want a nice straight line it's good if your hand and the blade is level with something but uh, these oscill oscillating tools are fabulous they cut through plastic they cut through wood they cut through metal uh, they have sand sanding attachments that come with it there's so many uses for these oscillating tools and i love mine it's so easy to use and i just make sure that i don't rush it because if you're pushing and pulling this tool in and out, your blades are going to get very dull very fast. And you just let the blade do its thing and take your time with it, as you see as I'm doing on the base here. Once everything was cut through with the oscillating tool, now the furniture uh, mallet just breeze through that no problem they came off super easy now that i had the nightstands uh, the bases taken off and the old trim taken off i used bondo to fill in the old hardware holes and the trim nail holes that were left behind wood filler would have worked equally well uh, but when I'm on a time crunch, when I'm doing furniture makeovers, I prefer Bondo. Uh, it mixes up within, oh, I can mix it up within 30 seconds. Then I fill the holes and within 10 to 15 minutes, I'm sanding because it dries so quickly. And the more hardener you put into the Bondo, uh, because you mix the hardener in with the Bondo. The more you put in, the faster it dries, because as you see here, it's already starting to get pretty tough to spread it. <laughs> it dries so fast that you have to work very, very fast with this product. That's the benefit of it, and that's kind of the downfall of it, because you do have to work quickly. My first batch dried up, so I went ahead and I made myself another batch of Bondo, and here I am just filling in all the pin holes uh, and the nail holes where the trim was. Ten minutes later they were all dried i brought them into my sanding room and i sanded the bondo smooth i also gave the entire set a good scuff sanding and i sanded the entire finish off the top when they were all sanded down and the dust was removed i brought them back into my paint room and gave them two coats of bin shellac based primer this primer is a bonding primer so uh, the paint adheres to it really really well it also adheres to your projects really well and it's also a stain blocking primer so if there's any bleed through odors uh, stains water stains etc this primer will cover everything in usually two coats two coats is usually more than sufficient and I have perfect coverage the other benefit to this shellac primer is kind of the same as Bondo. <laughs> it is fast. So when I apply it, it takes maybe 30 minutes to dry fully and it is ready for paint. Uh, it's not like I have to wait uh, overnight or wait a couple of hours before I can actually start painting. So again, it's a huge benefit when you're on a time crunch trying to pump out a lot of furniture like myself and just like with the bondo uh, again it's a benefit and a curse because it dries so fast you have to work very quickly with this primer uh, but then you can paint quickly with it you can't diddle doddle while you're priming because it just dries so fast and becomes a sticky mess i have a full tutorial on how to use bin shellac base primer which I'll include in the cards above and also in the description down below. Now for the fun part, I get to use this new cobblestone chalk mineral paint. I love trying out new colors and this is such a beautiful warm neutral. I know that these nightstands are going to be quick sellers. So what I did was made a 50-50 paint wash for the top because I wanted the wood grain to show through. So I just eyeballed it but I added in the cobblestone 
added in the same amount of water, gave it a really good mixing. Then using a, a round brush, it doesn't matter what brush you use, you could use any kind of brush for a paint wash. I added the paint wash onto the wood top. I made sure that the wash was getting into all the grain. And as you can see, I kind of brushed it on this way, that way, so it would have full coverage over this nightstand top. And then I smoothed it out with my brush going with the grain and made sure that all the sides were painted fully as well. Once the top was totally covered, I took a shop towel and removed the paint wash. And you do this while the paint is still wet. You do not wait for the wash to dry. So while the paint wash is still wet on your project, you just wipe it back and then you get a beautiful stained look. Uh, this will blend in nicely when I paint the bottom of the nightstand, as you'll see, but you get a beautiful, beautiful look that ties in with your project. I went ahead and repeated the exact same process on the second nightstand. Once I had the paint wash on the tops and they were dried, I went ahead and painted the base of these two nightstands in this new color cobblestone. Uh, Dixie Bell has put out a cottage collection uh, and they have really, really beautiful colors. There's six of them. This is, I believe, the most neutral out of the bunch, and that's why I decided to give it a try, and it's a really warm stone color. It has a lot of warm undertones. It's a cottage paint collection, but as you'll see, it can also be used on modern makeovers as well. I think this will be a really quick seller for me. I used my medium oval brush to paint it on, and the these nightstands took two coats to get full coverage. I also made sure to paint the backs of both nightstands uh, just so the back would have a finished look as well. And here's a quick tip that I know I've shared before, but I always flip my furniture pieces to paint the underside. As you can see, once they're flipped over, you can see areas that you've missed. Uh, and it's good to look at all angles of your furniture. So when you sell them and the people are putting them in the car, <laughs> you don't want to be caught with the portion of it not being painted. Uh, so I always uh, flip the pieces, make sure I get all the undersides, all the nooks and crannies so it's painted 1000%. I decided to add some textured wallpaper to the front of these doors uh, and I found this wallpaper selling at Talis, which is a local thrift store that we have here selling for a little over four dollars but this paper is so old the original cost was $16.99 from Sears I'm so glad that I found it though I went ahead and I measured the panels and then I measured the wallpaper to the exact same size Size. Then using this sticky glue, uh, I think it's called stick with me glue, which is awesome. Like it, this is really, really tacky glue. If you ever need a super tacky glue to do any projects with, this is the glue. So I just added some on and then using a putty knife, I made sure that it was distributed throughout the whole panel, just being careful not to make a mess. I mean, it's water-based, so it wipes off, but still, I just wanted to make sure I got into all the corners and uh, made sure that the whole panel was covered 100% before gluing down this wallpaper. The excess glue I just used for the other panel, uh, just not to be wasteful, so I just uh, moved it over to the other panel and made sure to smooth that all out before I added the wallpaper as well. Perfect fit and I made sure to smooth out any bubbles or any place that it was not 100% flat. I made sure to smooth it out with my hand and then I went and I got a shop towel, a damp shop towel. I just put it under water and to clean up all the edges where any of the glue might have been seeping out just to make sure that it was all cleaned up nicely. 
the next day. I let everything dry up overnight and I came back the next morning to spray on my gator hide top coat. Uh, I love gator hide because it is heavy duty. As I mentioned before in a few of my other videos, I used it on my kitchen table. It's been probably around three years. That table gets a beating and a cleaning every single day and it's still holding strong. So I know when I use gator hide, it the whatever piece I use it on is gonna be very protected and last for years to come. And on the SI blog, someone asked if I top coated the wallpaper as well. Yes, I just sprayed the entire piece top, sides, back, everything with the gator hide. So the wallpaper has been top coated as well. I wait two to three hours in between each coat of gator hide and I usually apply two to three coats. You can sand in between each coat, but when I spray it on, it goes on so smoothly and lovely. I don't feel that there's a need to. But if you're applying it with a sponge or a brush, you might wanna give it a light sanding in between each coat. Once it was all top coated, everything was dry 100%, I went ahead and drilled holes for new hardware for the front of these doors. And then I added new feet to the bottom. Woo, that was a lot of work for this nightstand set. But I have to admit, I love how they turned out. And I can't wait to hear what you think. So here's the before. And here's the after. So what did you think of this before and after? I can't wait to hear what you think. I am in love with this set and I hope you feel the same way and it's inspired you to try something on one of your old dated pieces. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or got any value from it, please share it with somebody who may find value in it as well. Also leave a comment down below and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe before you leave because it means so much to me. I can't believe how fast this channel is growing. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. You can also follow me on all my socials and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous week. See you again soon guys, bye.